Okay, this is the pedal assembly for a 1981 CJ7. It's got uh, manual brakes, um, manual transmission, so it's got the clutch pedal here. I, I'm going to be posting a separate video on how this whole mechanism works, like I said in the other video. There's a lot of pictures online, but I didn't really see any videos of it pulled out and sort of explained how the different pieces fit together because when you reach under there, you're not going to be able to really see or do much. There's very little room. The steering column is right underneath there, so it's blocking this up against the upper cowl. So it's very, very tough. What I want to talk about here just for a couple of minutes is the brake switch adjustments. So this brake switch adjustment here, I, I had a lot of problems with that. I'm still having some issues, but I have a couple fixes for this. So this, again, look at my other video. I, I, I go over it pretty clearly. So this pedal here, you push the brake pedal down. And here's the spring. Here's the return spring for the brake. You push the pedal down, it comes back. Let me put the brake, get a wave rusher, push rod, the master cylinder push rod. Then you have... Little push rod here so that goes into the master cylinder that goes over there the little washer and then the cotter pin so you can get access to this relatively easily if you're changing out your master cylinder um, one issue I had was and I wish I hadn't thrown away the old master cylinder when I replaced mine but it came with this it came with this mass uh, this uh, push rod now notice that there's no, there's a little lip there, but that lip just slides in and out of the master cylinder. There's nothing holding that back. And that's going to be very, very relevant in a second here when I show you this. So for, this is all relevant to the height of the brake pedal. So you can see here, notice that right here, okay, let me go over this just for a second. So there's a stop rod right here, or there, there's a pivot rod, and that and there's the, the switch at, uh, activator. So this slides in there, and this comes down and hits that switch. If what can happen is that this can slide back, and there's a stop, this round bar here is a stop. But, uh, and then so you can make it so it stops there and then it so right now it's pretty well positioned it's got you know it, it's nice it's it's stopping right here it's uh, on the on the pedal the springs pulling it back and it's actually in the brake pedal okay no big issue except for the fact that if you have a push rod that doesn't have a stay on it this thing remember slides in and out so when i put this in like this first off this the push rod is too far back it's, you know, there's a lot of play in it before it actually engages the brake. So there's a lot of play in it. Also, you might say, well, that's not that big of an issue. Everything, the brake light works, it gets actuated, that's fine. But notice here, this is what I had actually a bigger problem with. Notice the orientation, and it's really hard to explain this in a picture. So um, I'm, I'm really, I'm trying to do a video here of this. So uh, this isn't really, here, maybe I can do it like that a little bit. Maybe that's a little easier. Notice that the brake pedal is a lot higher than the clutch pedal. This brake pedal, when you have it in there, they, remember the gas is over here. The gas is way down here. And so I found myself having to lift my foot up a lot to hit the brake. So normally if you think about it, you're switching your, on your heel, you're pivoting on your heel a little bit from the gas to the brake. And so it's not safe to have to lift, lift your leg up if you're in a quick stop position or situation and then press the brake pedal down to engage it. That's, that's too much. This needs to be, let me go back to the safe way to do it or what it needs to be is not down here where this bar stops here, but it needs to be up a little bit. And notice that just a tiny bit of change makes a big, you can't see the pedal, but the pedal end here, because of the where the pivot point is, it moves it down a lot. So there's a lot of adjustment just by putting in maybe a quarter of an inch, not even that much, in the space in between there. Now, obviously, if you're pressing this up, make sure you're, you're 
your, your brake switch has to go up. And you might say, okay, well, I can use my brake switch. And I, I, I saw some people doing this. I can use my brake switch as a backstop. There's a little gap right there. And this positions the brake pedal just about right. Sorry, I, the, the videos needs to be pulled back some. But anyway, so the, so the brake switch here is engaged. Again, it's all fine. You've taken out the play actually from the push rod when you push this brake pedal forward and you hold it there, except for this is just snapped in there. That's not gonna hold it. You get this pushing back, look at that. It just, it just pushes it back. And this is a plastic piece right here. You don't necessarily want to use this as a backstop, even if it could hold right there. So a couple different fixes. First off, if you can find, if you're unfortunate like me to have a brake push rod um, that doesn't, I have a stay. I believe there's supposed to be a rubber gasket in there. I'm still on the search for one. That when you press it into the master cylinder, it stays in there. <clears throat> and you have to, you know, yank on it pretty good. Yank on it pretty good so that it holds, you know, it, that, it, that it's holding strong enough so that this spring doesn't overcome it and pull it out. So I think if, um, you know, if you had something holding this in, it would hold it up. That would be the stop that would be the stop for the, for the brake pedal. But mine, I don't have that. So it was pulling too far up. It was making the brake pedal go too high. And it was making, again, an adjustable push rod can only fix the, the brake height. Well, it can't fix the brake height. It can fix engagement of this right at the top because you just lengthen it out and let it be, let it be longer. But it cannot fix the height of the brake pedal. And that, that's even a bigger problem. So what I did, getting underneath there, I took a half inch, just a piece of lead pipe. It was just like a, uh, I don't know, like a four inch nipple or something like that uh, from Home Depot. And I just used my grinder and cut it in half. Now, it's, it's a little taped together, but what I did was able to do was, I was able to fish my hands under there and put this under and have it clasp right there hopefully that's clear right there so notice that it creates like just like an eighth of an inch spacing between these two so it acts as a, a very sturdy metal stop and i just i can push this the the, the brake um light switch push that a little forward so it's engaged and then the brake pedal here is down actually you know another inch or so which made it much more comfortable to hit the brake now when you what i did was i was able to pull i was able, able to take one of these um these clamps here and i had to undo it totally and uh, there's a smaller one would probably work a little bit better and go over here now you can now you can also depending on how you can get to this you could have this slit over here and you just you just clamp it on there. I had it on there for months and it worked perfectly. It was super stable, it was safe, and it was there. Um, so that's one way to do it. After I pulled this off, I, I didn't want to have that kind of as a as a tape together thing, you know, to each his own. You gotta figure out what works for you. So anyway, that worked fantastic. It was only about, this is about an uh, inch and a half long, two inches somewhere in there. So another way to do this, and, it, and it's kind of going against what I just said a little bit, but it's a little bit more elegant in my opinion, is you take this out. You take this little piece out. So this is that little clip. Again, just goes right in there. And this slides right in there and it just snaps. Again, this is threaded. This is half inch threads. So what I did was, or what I'm, going to do is if you take a a washer that goes on there and I'm just using these as spacings I had some leftover stuff around the garage and I had taken this clip out and if you um, then you take here's a fine thread I believe that's I'm pretty sure that's half inch um, And then you can screw this on there. It's gonna take me a minute to get it on there. So this, this process right here, this fix or whatever you wanna call it, 
does involve using the the uh, the brake switch, the brake light switch, as a as a stop. I'll get that at least a little bit snug here. It, being fine thread, even though it's plastic, it feels like it's pretty secure in there, that it's going to hold it reasonably tight. So there it is. Again, here's a little bit of a close-up of that. Again, that's a half-inch, God, I think it's a half-inch fine thread nut. I, I got it at Home Depot for a buck or something like that. Now notice, notice it engages the switch, and it keeps this from getting pressed backwards. The, the, so it actually holds it in. I think it's going to hold it in reasonably well. Again, it would have to strip all that plastic. And you know what? I can just go back to my old my old way if needed or if I ever find the right rubber you know, gasket or whatever to hold the push rod in. But also notice here that it's create what the space it's creating. And it may be difficult to see, but there's a little... Now there's a little eighth inch gap between there. So this bar is not acting as the stop. And then it is holding the brake pedal, this being the brake pedal, because I know the orientation's a little funky. So this brake pedal is then being held down. It's not, it's not up here. It's not sitting here where it's too far up from the clutch. I'm just using the clutch pedal as a, as a general guide for how high the brake pedal is, because I can I can see it. Um, so so that's what I think I'm going to use. Unless I can find something for the push rod here, I think I'm going to use this right here. Um, again, it's you know the the wiring harness just snaps right on there. It's very difficult to get into, but you can fish your hand and get it up in there. And then again. So like I said, you can snug that nut up and you should be able to find the switch. I looked online on Amazon and they're, I don't know, six bucks, something like that. I mean, you likely already have one. Again, this has threads on it. Those aren't just ribbed. That's actually threaded. Again, I saw some references to it that um, maybe they make some that are just ribbed and aren't threaded. They're just, you know, rib stops for the for this piece here that snaps in for those little tabs right there that it's supposed to, but again, this, so this goes and it actuates. So you're gonna see it's pressing it and it's using it as a stop. You're not generally like, you're lifting your foot off the brake. It's not, it's not snapping back. But um, yeah, I think that will, I think that should hold reasonably well. And like I said, if it doesn't, then you know, uh, just figure something else else out for this. So hopefully that helps. Again, there, there's just, I, I posted a couple of questions and it was difficult to explain just the description. There's an interplay between the length of the push rod, whether the push rod's being held in there and keeping the brake. Sorry, I'm a, <laughs> keep talking about that piece of it, but it, it's kind of a, the mechanism there it took me a while to figure out what was going on and why there was such a big issue here. So this has to be held in or you have to stop this and you have to stop it before it gets to that bar. And so you can either do it like this via something having to do with holding your, holding your brake light switch up or you have to put some kind of space in there. You could put, I, don't know, I think at one point I actually tried putting a little round, you know, rubber, um, cushion on the you put on the bottom of the stool or something like that to create that space and it actually works but again it's plastic and it's just got the little rubber glue on it and it's not going to stay particularly it's not going to stay secure there so there may be some other ways I thought about some clamps across this aspect right here that would create a little space right there there's probably a couple different ways you could even melt, uh, weld something if you had this out to this piece to act as a stop um, but anyway, that's just a couple of different ways you can look at it. So, you know, that's what I ran into. So, you know, hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any questions or leave any comments.